Good evening. Thank you for being here, for braving the cold outside and a little bit inside too. <laughs> but we hope that this might be a warm space that we can create together throughout this evening in this service. Um, over the past 10 weeks of our meetings on Wednesday nights, John and I hoped to really kind of dive into what it looks like to be whole, to be integrated in our mind, body, and spirit. And so we hope that throughout this service this evening that we can discuss that even further, to figure that out even further together. Um, and that just that as you are here, that you can know that you can take a deep breath, that you can inhale and exhale and know that this time here together tonight is, is unhurried, that we can dwell in this space together and breathe. And now a reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Come to me, all you who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the word of the Lord. Will you join me in prayer? God, we do come to you weary. We do come to you burdened. We do come to you in need of rest. But all things considered, we do come to you because we trust that in this very moment, you are somehow with us here. We trust that your love is the force that holds our weary arms when life's battles overwhelm us. You are closer than our skin, though still more than we can conceive or rationalize. You empower us toward clarity and purpose, though you are always inexhaustible mystery. We ask for your forgiveness, God, for those times where we reduce who you are to what we think we need or know. God, tend to our wounds, the ones so painful that they blind us to your presence. Speak love over our scars, the ones so itchy that they steal our attention. Remind us that you will supply our needs, that you'll take care of us. We ask that you quiet our minds so that we might hear that which you've spoken over us since before time even came into being. Let divine stillness rest on our bodies so that we might see everything we do with our bodies as service, as worship, as bearing witness to your incarnate word. God, speak to our spirits in the silence. Thank you for your presence, God, for the divine rest that carries all of who we are, mind, body, and spirit, toward wholeness. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. As you're able, will you stand, or if it's more comfortable, you can stay seated um, as we sing hymn 692 together.
Keep me seated. A reading from Psalm 1. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or take the path that sinners tread or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Have you ever heard of mycorrhiza? I recently read a New York Times article that even further developed my love for the trees and for creation. Mycorrhizas are thread-like fungi that envelop and fuse with tree roots, helping them extract water and nutrients like phosphorus and nitrogen in exchange for some of the carbon-rich sugars the trees make through photosynthesis. Research has demonstrated that mycorrhizas also connect plants to one another and that these associations might be especially ecologically important. The trees, the plants, fungi, and microbes in forests are so thoroughly connected, some scientists describe them as superorganisms. Now, enter Suzanne Samard who has totally changed this science. Suzanne considered becoming a writer before she discovered forestry, and her love of nature and trees and her childhood exploring forests solidified this calling. Now there is some controversy in the forestry field around this science, very scandalous. Some of them think it's too far to say that the trees communicate with each other. And normally, Samard, as a scientist, is careful to use conservative language, but when addressing the public, she embraces metaphor and reverie in a way that makes these scientists uncomfortable. In a TED Talk she gave in 2016 that has millions and millions of views, she describes a world of infinite biological pathways. Species that are inter interdependent like yin and yang. And veteran trees that send messages of wisdom on to the next generation of seedlings. She calls the oldest, largest, and most interconnected trees the mother trees. A phrase meant to evoke their capacity to nurture those around them, even when they aren't literally their parents. In her book, Finding the Mother Tree, she compares mycorrhizal networks to the human brain. I could go on and on, and part of that is probably because it's speaking to my child self that was obsessed with the Chronicles of Narnia and how the trees were able to communicate in those books. But anyways, before I digress, it's safe to say that this is a totally new way of seeing creation. So, when we approach this psalm, Psalm 1, about trees planted by streams of water, I can't help but think about some actual trees. I have always been drawn to this psalm for the imagery of it. And now the science of mycorrhizas makes me even more in awe of it. After all, this is the first psalm of 150 psalms we get in the book. Commentaries say that this was chosen for a reason as the first one, to set the tone for all of the others, to set the example of what it looks like to live faithfully. 
So I love the imagery part of it, but then we also get all of this talk about the law, the law of God. And when I hear this word, I will be honest that I flinch a little bit (laughs) because I think about the years that I've spent trying to live by all of the rules, (laughs) trying my hardest to be perfect by the law. I thought that all that mattered was being right, was following those rules to a T. And that's the law I thought I needed to follow. But now, I can see it's so much more expansive than that. When I read Psalm 1 with now, my shoulders relax. Because now I see that all of the law and all of the commandments hang on one thing. Love. As we prepare for the season of Advent coming so soon, I think of that lyric in O Holy Night that gets me every time. His law is love, and his gospel is peace. This is what it means to be that well-planted tree by the stream. To love. In her book, Psalms for Praying, Nan C. Merrill puts it like this. Blessed are those who walk hand in hand with goodness, who stand beside virtue, who sit in the seat of truth. For their delight is in the spirit of love. And in love's heart, they dwell day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water that yield fruit in due season, and their leaves flourish, and in all that they do, they give life. The unloving are not so. They are like dandelions which the wind blows away. Turning from the heart of love, they will know suffering and pain. They will be isolated from wisdom, for love knows the way of truth. The way of ignorance will perish as love's penetrating light breaks through hearts filled with illusions. Forgiveness is the way. The thing about trees is that even those that are perfectly well watered, those that remain by the stream in good health, for many types of them, they go through seasons too. They bloom and thrive in spring. They survive the summer. They give up their leaves and let them fall in autumn. They appear to be dead even in the winter. And yet, spring comes again, and they bloom again. There are many, many lessons to be learned from the trees, and this is one that I will be learning over and over again the rest of my life. We are not meant to be green and blooming all year round, all of our lives. There are seasons of our lives when we must rest. Maybe a season of grief. The trees, the flowers, so much of creation follows the pattern of life, of death, of resurrection. And so we learn how to practice those little deaths too. We might not can always count on spring coming three months later like the trees can, but we can count on resurrection always. There is a cycle at play in all of this. In the great story of creation, there is life, death, and resurrection. And that is so much of what we've discussed over these past 10 weeks of our Wednesday night study called Toward Wholeness. The practices we've discussed, as varied as they have been, have all had some things in common. They have called us to slow down. They have called us to be present, to stay open. They have reminded us that productivity and efficiency are not meant to be our life's purpose. We have been reminded instead that we are meant to be a whole person mind, body, and spirit, all connected. 
We are meant to be whole as an individual human being within ourselves, and we are also meant to be whole by relying on our community around us. We are all connected too. We could learn something from the trees, how to be our best selves, our best community, only taking that which we need, knowing when to rest and when to bloom, caring for the young, whether they are, ki are our kin or not, because we are all inextricably connected. Jesus' invitation, as we heard in Matthew, to come and rest still applies today. Sa Sabbath still means something to us today. We are not meant to work until we are desperate for rest. No, our rest can fuel our work instead. May we resist the tyranny of busyness to instead live into this unhurried wholeness. May we take our time growing. And through it all, may we stay connected to our source of love, the great mother tree who sustains us all. Amen. So now we come to the table. And like Bree was saying, we're like trees planted by water in that God sustains us and provides for us and grows us. But we're not like trees in that we gotta plant our roots more than just once. We gotta rely on practices like we've talked about the last semester or however we measure time around here. Um, or practices like this. Because thinking on how trees eat, how we eat, how we feed ourselves spiritually, I might be projecting, but I think you guys can understand when I say I can get really spiritually hangry. Um, I can really lose awareness of God in my life by choice or circumstance and get restless. I can fixate on what I think I lack and decide that if my appetite is not met soon enough, I'm going to blow up in frustration. But that's probably just me. But also, I kept going back to Matthew, like Bree read a few minutes ago. And it, Jesus offers us sustenance. In answer to our burnout, Jesus offers us not just rest, but abundant rest. Minds clear from worry about the future and hearts free from shame about the past. But Jesus doesn't stop there. Later in Matthew and the other Gospels, dining with the disciples, Jesus offers them himself. He promises never to leave them, to always be with them. and soul stay with them like the Spirit still does today for us. You know, Jesus spoke these promises in his day-to-day -day life in his regular practices. Whether out on a walk, sitting on a hillside, or sharing a meal around a table. Which is what we come to now. So on the night our Lord was handed over to suffering and death, He took the bread, and when He had broken it, He gave thanks and said, This is My body which is given for you. Take and eat in remembrance of Me. And in the same way, He took the cup and said, This is My blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for, the, and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Drink all of you in remembrance of Me. Will you pray with me? God, thank you for your presence at work, even in the mundane, seemingly insignificant parts of our lives. As we eat, grant us an even clearer awareness. As we drink, enliven us to your presence. 
and for us to present ourselves amongst others, all in worship of you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we will um, do communion by intinction tonight, but if after you would rather us bring it to you, just give us a quick little wave and we can do that. Um, but as Ralph plays for us, as you feel ready, you can come receive that moment. The peace of the Lord be always with you. <laughs> Thank you again for being here this evening. We do deeply hope it was a rejuvenating time for you. And now, if you will receive this benediction. May you go out in joy and be led forth in peace. May you know when to act and when to rest. And may you settle into an unhurried wholeness bound up in the endless love of God. Amen.